This is linear regression in action. But before we take a deep dive into its workings, I would like to ask you a question. What is the simplest function you can think of? While there are many candidates, if you're like most people, you would probably agree that the linear function is the most trivial of them all. And being the simplest function, it gives rise to arguably the simplest machine learning method, linear regression. Why is simplicity important? Because if you have two hypotheses that explain the same data, one complex and one simple, you should usually choose the simpler one. But before I say anything else about linear regression, let's have a look at an example. Say you have salary data, where for each person you know their annual gross pay and how many years of experience they have. But what if for some employees you only know their experience but not their salary? Can you predict it based on other people's salaries? Fortunately, linear regression comes to rescue. It fits a straight line through your data, and then we can estimate salaries by moving each point along the vertical axis until it meets this line. This sounds like good news, but what exactly does it mean to fit a line? To quantify line fitness, let's first take a look at just one person and define prediction error to be the difference between their actual salary and the predicted one. A line with a good fit is the one that minimizes the average error across all data points. For numerical reasons, it is convenient to replace errors with their squares. Of course, a straight line isn't always the best fit. Depending on the data, it might be best to use a quadratic function, or a trigonometric function, or some really complex function that nobody has a name for. But let's say a linear function seems like a good fit. Any linear function can be built in two stages. First, we select the slope, and then the offset, which simply means the shift along the vertical axis. So fitting the line means finding parameters A and B that minimize the average squared error. Let's revisit our example of employee salaries. Obviously, in the real world, salaries depend on many other factors. For example, we can consider the number of years of formal education. To account for this extra dimension, instead of fitting a straight line, we will fit a plane. What this means for our equation is that we must add another variable. Now, to solve linear regression, we need to minimize the average squared error. Remember that each error is the difference between the predicted salary and the actual one. We take the average across all data points. By the way, you have probably noticed that we are back to the one-dimensional case. This is because it lends itself better to visualization. To find the minimum of this function, you can use the algorithm called gradient descent. The idea is simple, you start at a random point, and then you keep moving in the direction that decreases the function the fastest. This direction is given by the negative of the gradient, which is a vector of all partial derivatives of the function. I recently made a video on gradient descent, so if you want a more in-depth explanation, you can watch it here. Now let's see how it all works together. For gradient descent to work, we will need derivatives with respect to a and b. We initialize a and b randomly, then calculate the derivatives and subtract them from a and b. This improves the fit of the line to the data. By repeating this process, we will get a better and better fit. I hope you enjoyed getting to know linear regression. And if you want more content like this, just hit the notification bell below. Also, let me know if you have any questions or suggestions for what topics you would want covered next. Finally, here is my question to you. Earlier I mentioned that when choosing between two models, it's usually best to choose the simpler one. Please comment down below if you know what philosophical principle I was referring to.